Hello and welcome. My name is Arthur Jones and you're in the Story Cafe, where we talk about all facets of story. And today we're going to talk about four facets of story, one that you're familiar with, storytelling, and three that might be new to you, story listening, story building, and story doing. So let's get started. Story listening. We all know what listening is. We have two ears and we even listen with our eyes to see the reaction of people. That's why the notion of, I want to see the whites of their eyes, is a kind of listening. I want to see the posture that they stand in when I speak to them. Are they recoiling? Are they leaning in? Listening comes in many different flavors. But the listening that we're talking about is a systems thinking kind of listening. We're listening to understand the forces that shape the people that we serve. Our internal customers, internal customers are your employees, your partners, your teammates. External customers are, well, your customers, the people that pay you for the product services that you offer. What forces are at work on them shaping them every day. You know, in the mad, mad world that we live in today, there's VUCA everywhere. Uh, VUCA, if you don't know what it is, is an acronym. Uh, first used by the military, embraced by business. And it means V for volatility. U for uncertainty. C for complexity, and A for ambiguity. You get those four things together, or any one of those things, and it's disorienting. And when you're disoriented in business, oh my, not a good thing, right? Story listening wants to acknowledge that there's VUCA in the world. In the southwestern United States, some states are struggling with drought. In the Northeast, um, there are states that are going to struggle with freezing cold this winter. Um, in Florida and islands in the Pacific, there are communities that are thinking about rising tides and water in the streets that should be in the ocean. That's volatility, that's uncertainty, that's complexity and chaos. That's not knowing what comes next. When you're story listening, you're trying to see what those forces are that are affecting the people that you serve are, because if you make products and services and solutions for those people, understanding what's affecting those people will either help you build a new product or amend the product that you currently offer to them to be a better service for them. The forces that shape you and your internal customer and your external customers and what we can learn by first seeking to understand what those forces are doing to shape them before we want to be understood by those same people. Story listening. So much more depth that we can go into there, but Think of it as a systems dynamics exercise. There are forces at work in the world, interest rate rise, um, climate change, um, unemployment. All of those things are forces shaping the customers and the businesses that you serve. Story building is next. Story building is really a fun one because you know, we think of building stories as sitting at your kitchen table or in your conference room and thinking to yourself like, oh gosh, I need to create a landing page. What am I going to say about the product that I offer? Or what am I going to say about the customers that I serve? And in the quiet of your, your den, your kitchen, and maybe you're on a park bench or in your conference room, you implicitly understand your customer and you begin writing that landing page. 
I remember early in my sales career selling technology to Fortune 100 companies when a wise old salesperson said to me, Arthur, no one ever buys anything from you because you found their implied need. I was like, whoa. So tell me the difference between implied and explicit. And they did. And they said implied is when you think you know. And you put post-it notes on the wall and you write in your notebook what you think you know. And you use that as source material for what you, what you say and what you write about the people that you serve. Explicit knowledge comes from the horse's mouth. It comes from the people that you serve when you say, listen, here's what I think keeps you awake at 2 a.m. in the morning. When you sit bolt upright in bed, can't sleep because you're nervous about this thing going on in your business. Am I right? And they say, well, you kind of. Let me tell you what really keeps me awake at 2 a.m. And when they say that, you're getting explicit knowledge from them about what troubles them and what kind of product, service, or solution that you might offer them that can make them sleep like a baby through the night. You can only know what that product should be and what that design should be like having that explicit understanding. That's understanding your customer's narrative and knowing it almost as well as they do. The other part of story building gets even more fun, more engaging, and requires more effort on your part. It really means that you now have designed a product based on what they've told you that keeps them awake at 2 a.m or amended the product that you had to work better at helping them sleep for the night with this new knowledge you have about them. And you go back to them and say, hey, you know, based on our last conversation, I've changed the product, and I want to tell you the story of how this product works for you. And you tell the story. It takes about 90 seconds, and they go, wow, Art, that's amazing. I think that's, that's, that's great. The first part of that story, wow. The second part, it was like a missile over my head. I didn't understand what you were trying to say. It's a little confusing. And I say to them, okay, well, here's the three points I was trying to make in the second part of that story. Um, if those three points make sense, how would you say that to one of your colleagues that suffers with the same thing at 2 a.m. that keeps them awake? And they tell you their version of, a story around those three points. I say, wow, that is pretty good. And I like the way you said that. You now have the first part that they loved that you told, and they have the second part that they shared that they told, and you combine those two, you've got the whole 90-second story that you can now go to the second ideal client profile, someone that you know, maybe one of your VIP customers, and sit down and say, listen, you know I'm always coming to you to kind of test market my my stories around new product designs and new offers. I've got another one today, and I want to tell you the story. And you tell them the story using your first half and that other ideal client's second half, and they go, oh, my God, that is awesome. But, you know, it, there's, there's more than one thing that I worry about at 2 a.m. Um, it's close, but it's adjacent to what you just described. Let me tell you the story. And so it goes. And the third ideal customer, another one of your VIPs that is just like the other 1,500 that you want to reach, you do this over and over again. And when you take an amalgamation of all the stories that you and they have built together, their words and your words mashed up until this compelling, insightful, and thoughtful 90-second blurb when you tell that 90-second blurb that's co-created with the ideal customers that you already have, those that might be your customers that struggle with the same thing that keeps them awake at 2 a.m., hear that story and go, oh, my gosh, that's music to my ears. No one ever has quite understood me like that person does. Nobody ever knew what kept me awake at 2 a.m. as specifically as they do. You can see where story listening helps me understand 
Story of Building helps me collaborate and co-create one whiz-bang, amazing, um, compelling story. Music to the ears of all of my ideal clients. That makes the telling of the story not so hard anymore. Because it's not you putting flip charts and post-it notes and drawing on the whiteboard to come up with a story that you implicitly know what your customer wants. You explicitly collaborated and co-created because you listen first to seek to understand. And then when you're now wanting to be understood, it's a co-creation with the clients that you serve. Hard to beat that. Because with messaging like that, you'll reach and engage and nurture conversations with the people that you serve because they're going to acknowledge that you know them pretty well. You know their narrative. But then comes the last part and perhaps the hardest part. You've told an awesome story. You've done the work to collaborate and co-create. You've listened well. And you've learned what channels to put that story on to reach the people that you want to serve. The hard part is story doing. Because as a corporate culture, as a solopreneur, you have a culture. You have behaviors, beliefs, principles, and values that are maybe articulated in the stories that you tell on your blog, on LinkedIn, in the tweets that you tweet, um, on Facebook, in groups. As soon as you drift in your actions from the stories that you tell in your post and your blog. And I see in the real world, your behavior is not consistent with the stories you've been telling. I put an X through that box and say, oh, no, nope, this one's not real. They're, they're foo-foo. <laughs> they're not sincere. Um, they don't believe the stories that they tell. Neither do I. Let's move on. And they call for next to another vendor to come up and try and satisfy their needs. Because the old, the old acronym KLT is why our customers buy from us. They buy from people that they know, like, and trust. I can know you. I can like you. But I trust you because I share values with you and values of integrity, meaning that what you say and what you do are in sync. KLT is the key. Story listening, story building, and story doing help you achieve KLT in the marketplace. No like and trust. That's my thesis on four of the facets of storytelling that I think help you Stand out from the crowd. Tell thoughtful, insightful, and compelling stories to the audience of people in the world that you want to serve. Reach them, engage them, and nurture conversations with them because you know them so well. Because you've done the work. Um, if you want to know more, tune into the Story Cafe because we love talking about this diamond-shaped um, beauty of a human skill that we all have, which is storytelling. But storytelling goes better when you listen and build and do your story as well. So until next time, this is Art Jones and the Story Cafe, always talking about story, but talking about the different facets to help you accomplish more in your business. Until next time, bye for now.